Lovable just released something big. We have Lovable Backend or Lovable Labs, which is Lovable now supports full stack development, no setup, no external accounts. All in one backend, no Supervise account needed, how to enable it, and Labs feature. This is a Labs feature and directive exploration and may be removed or significantly changed based on feedback, which is awesome. You don't need Supervise and you can have a backend to your app. But how does this actually work and does it live up to expectations? This is what I want to do and explore in this video. So I'm going to start a new project with Lovable Labs enabled and see if I can have a project with Edge Functions, with a database, all within this Lovable Labs as promised right here. So let's get right into that. I'm going to hit go to Labs here. I'm going to turn on Lovable Backend, which is already turned on actually. And yeah, I'm just going to create a new project. So here I actually need to shift to my Lovable. This is Lovable Labs, so this is now turned on. I can switch to Superbase if I want to, but let's let's just use Lovable Labs. And let's just give this a simple prompt. And let's say let's create a well, a simple web app where the user can enter a name and email. And this is stored in a database on the backend. The user can then, hmm, actually, let's just have some sort of authentication. Okay, we'll use again their name and email and authenticate to log in to the system. Once logged in, the user can send, can press a button to send a request to the following webhook and then the web app will wait for a response. So pretty straightforward sort of use case. In my situation, I'm just going to go to NA10, I'm going to create a new workflow and I'm just going to trigger manually or rather, let's just add a webhook right here. So now we'll have a webhook here that will be able to send data to this. So let's just go here, let's go rip the test URL and let's just go back to lovable and just paste in that webhook and let's just hit enter and see what happens over here okay cool i'm like halfway through with my credits for the month so that's fine agent mode is also on which is a great piece of tech as well and let's see what happens here this evokes a modern says dashboard like versatile or linear cool let me start by Hmm, interesting. So here it's saying writing superbase migration. Interesting. So in settings, backend, create a chat with the AI to create a backend. The AI will automatically create a backend for your project when needed. Okay, so project settings, high lovable badge, okay. Labs. So labs is turned on, yep, right here. And Yep, I mean, so far. Okay, I mean, it is. Yes, I think I, it did mention Superbase. Maybe it's a, like a problem in the sort of labeling that you get, but okay, let's hit apply changes here. I mean, I am not connected to, yeah, I'm not connected to Superbase here. So it is still using Superbase logo, I guess, but I'm not connected to Superbase at all. So I'm just curious what happens out of the box here, because this is a very new feature that I just saw released yesterday. So I'm just curious how it actually works. In the meantime, if we go back here, this is still applying changes. So we'll see if we are able to log in as a user, create an account, and then send some information right here to an A10. As you can see here, when I search for Lovable Labs, there's literally no videos about it. So it is definitely a very, very new feature. Okay, so this is still creating stuff. So I might just pause the video and resume it once I get something to update. All right, cool. So here we got six edits made. We have authentication is already. We get the modern design system, complete authentication with hook design and it sends a post to request to your webhook. Cool. 
So let's see, what's next? Refine and customize, master prompting, GitHub sync. Execute, execute, I've already executed, and now we have this right here. Cool, so let's see if we can sign up with an account. So Kevin, email, and let's type in a quick password right here. Let's actually just use that, create account. All right, sweet. Send a poke request, fail to fetch, so Let's see if this, maybe it stopped listening. Status is 200, great. I mean, and we got the data right here. Awesome, so we got the data from the login user. I mean, this looks pretty impressive with no need to have user authentication. I guess my question is, is there a way for us to see the actual users? Just like before you could go into Superbase. Hmm, I guess maybe you need to run SQL in order to do that. Let me just use the chat here. How can I see what's in my backend database? I'm just curious about this. I mean, this is just saying sending requests, so potentially this is, I mean, it would send a 200 response, so that's fine. Workflow was started, yeah. I can help you see what's in your backend database. Okay, based on your project, you have a Superbase database with two main tables. Let me check the current contents. Okay, you have one user profile. Webhook request table, you have one user request. Okay, there's other ways you can view and manage your database. So, I mean, this is still mentioning Superbase database, which is interesting though, because, hmm, I mean, I didn't set up a Superbase database. I'm also curious. what this is actually doing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's not it. Let me just see if I can find that database in my account. Yeah, so I just couldn't find the database, but maybe I was on the wrong account. However, you can still see what you have in your database right here. So this is working as expected, which is fine. So what if we wanted to have an edge function, I don't know, to grab data from Airtable. So um, if I go to airtable.com slash create slash tokens, for example, I can, first of all, I need to ensure I'm in the right account, which this is not it. So over here, I'm going to go, just going to create a new token. Let's call it lovable test. Let's give it all the scopes. And let's just create a new database and read from it. So lovable their table, obviously this might not necessarily be needed if we're using Superbase as the main database. But I'm also curious to see whether that works as expected. So Kevin, John, Alan, let's grab, I know, emails. So this will be kevin at gmail.com, john at gmail.com, and alan at gmail.com. Perfect. So let's create a token for this database. We might need to refresh here. Yep. Let's add the scopes again. And before when you used to insert a token, it would ask you, like this is a secure thing, you shouldn't just leave it out in the open. So I'm just curious whether this will now take care of it on its own. So YouTube Lovable Labs. I'm going to create a token, I'm going to copy that, hit done, and let's go back right here. So, okay, here we get the same thing. Connect Superbase phase, then, then ask Lovable to store them securely instead. Okay, so what happens if I hit connect Superbase? Backend, integrate users, backend capability. Okay. So what happens if I click database? I see, okay. So this might be the way, I guess, to look at your data. So we go to settings, backend, database, profiles. All right, great. So, okay, so this is the backend way to look at your data. So it's all connected right here. We've got the webhook request. We've got the storage, so nothing there. Authentication, allow people to sign up to your app, disable signups. Okay, great. So this is sort of replacing all the super base information. We've got one user created today. Not the band, we've got the email right there. Perfect, okay. So secrets. Yeah, so I'm assuming this is where this would be stored. <clears throat> so 
let's just say on the backend let's allow the user to read from this air table using this token and then we say air table base id let's just grab that so let me just pause this so here the base id would be that and there is also the table id right there so i'm just going to give this information to allowable table id then i have the base id obviously i'll delete all this so if i send this um let's press got it what if we say please store these securely on the backend let's hit send anyway and let's see what happens it is a bit unclear i guess let me examine the existing code base and database schema since this sort of created the backend on its own i would assume that it should make it more straightforward to store edge functions and secure stuff so here what it's saying is let me check if there's a super base functions directory let me check if there's any existing edge functions let me check the existing database structure okay i mean it is pretty cool as a concept the user wants to add that let me create a comprehensive plan based on the analysis okay creating an air table request table to log api calls backend dash function so i think it is doing it on its own even though it was like it should be securely stored with secure restore your provided air table credentials and allow that okay cool I like how it went into the chat feature. I don't think it was enabled that I enabled that. So I think it decided it had to think about the steps to take before actually taking them. So now this is going through and executing that plan. So this would be cool to see as well. In the meantime, that so far has used around 4. Point, I guess 4.7 credits. So it's still part of the five daily free credits that you get. So let me just pause this and see what happens once this comes back as ready. All right, sweet. So this just finished. That seems to have used the remaining credits and a bit of the others as well. So here, what we got is create tables for a table connection with proper RLS policies, backend dash function, great. Frontend component, the integration now provides a computer table workflow where users can create connections, manage them and sync data by directly with their table bases okay sweet nice so here we've got webhooks we've got air table here so if i click on that let's see if it manages to get the information from our table so loading okay here we've got an error so let's see if we can try to fix that okay so here i was running into a, a few issues with signing out with air table just loading indefinitely and here it's saying that this should be fixed so here it's asking me to check the logs to see the detailed logs and for the sound sign out button this is still not working so for some reason let's just refresh this so yeah sign out is still not working our table is still not working and let's say both of these are still not working um here it's asking me to have a look at the console so let's just do that so can i just hmm. interesting we're getting this we're hiring but yeah whatever these are the console logs paste so here for some reason we got this error which is a 406 error when trying to access the profile table so Still making changes here. What I'll do here, if this doesn't work, is give it the exact API information in terms of how to read that right there. So let's see if that works. In the meantime here, this is saying there's a better logging. Okay. Refresh, sign out button. Okay, so let's refresh this. Let's hit sign out. Yeah, which again doesn't seem to be working. If I go to our table, yeah, this is still not working right here. So let me just hard refresh the whole thing. Okay, so 
Uh, okay, that logged me in again. If I hit our table here. Yeah, this is still not working. So let me just send this. Both are still not working. FYI, here's how to read from our table. I mean, this is a bit annoying because this was something that used to work quite well. A few days ago, I would say. And what's funny is that here it's saying produces 90% less errors. Um, yeah. So let's see. And let's see what happens here. All right. So I'm um, back to this because I had to stop the recording. And even though this says that everything has been fixed, the way I'm seeing this is that it's still not working as expected. So what I'm going to do just to ensure that I'm viewing the latest version of that is create the project here, publish it. And let's just go here and see the live version and do that I'm missing something. So here, hmm. now the question is, what was the password that I gave it? That is the question. Yeah, let's sign up with a new account. John Doe. Let's see, this should be interesting if it will actually tell me that that exists. Yeah, and it is doing that, as you can see right here. So let's give it another email. If I go to our table here. Okay, so here's asking for that. Interesting. Okay. So for some reason, I didn't quite hard code everything there. So, okay, let's just go here and let's just say, okay, let's, boom, boom, okay, let's hard code the Airtable information so that we always pull the same stuff, ensure the data is securely stored. So like this, we should be able to always grab the right information from this specific database, specific table and specific information right here. Okay, so I'll give this a second. And what's cool is that this is now showing exactly what is happening. So it's hard coding the stuff, I guess. Cool. Updated the RTB integration to use the hard coded system credentials. Okay, and now for Jerry build data, don't need to configure their own connection. Okay, so why do I need to press apply changes? Okay, so yeah, makes sense. So you review the SQL and then I guess this is now putting in the actual values and it's not showing them here in the preview. I'm guessing. Create policy, everyone can view system connections. Yeah, because it is a bunch of data, like placeholder data right here. But anyway, let's apply that. And now this is saying that this should now work. So if we hit publish, update. It's interesting though that this is not displaying even the login like the new connection screen wasn't being displayed right here but this has been updated so let's refresh here let's try again our table huh okay reload okay for some reason i'm still not getting that hmm and sign up is still not working so yeah i'm getting I guess mixed results with this update in Lovebill in the sense that it did seem to ask me for that before, but now that the data is hard coded, so if I wanted to always pull data from this specific air table at this stage, it doesn't seem to be able to for some reason or another. And as you saw, I went back and forth quite a few times to try and get that to work. So seems like it's not quite there yet in terms of the whole backend working is expected, but I think it's a step in the right direction. So those are my thoughts on that. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know what you think once you've tried Lovable Labs as well. In the meantime, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss future videos. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll speak to you soon.